Good morning, world. Today, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of one of the densest compositions I've ever put together. I'll be exploring the penultimate 16 bars of my new piece, Kyber. The record for instrumental density in my compositions would have to be Throttle Grip 200 from the early 2000s, because there are 108 guitars recorded in one section. Here's an excerpt, and I'm going to fade from the speaker output to the direct track mixed into this video. So there it is, that is an awful lot of guitars. Well that's definitely dense, but I don't find it all that interesting anymore. Apart from 108 guitars, there's not really any other features, no real selling points. Nothing particularly dramatic about the music in my current opinion. However, here's something I do feel happy about promoting today. Those penultimate 16 bars of Kyber. <laughs> So, as I said at the beginning, that's dense. I will show you exactly how dense on my computer monitor in just a moment, and I will also be selecting out individual sections to play so that you can get an idea of just how this is built. I think it's musically interesting as well as sonically interesting, but that's an interesting point in itself. I'm going to show you the piece of paper where the chord and key structure for this piece is written down, and you'll see that in the ending section, which covers both the penultimate 16 bars and then the guitar solo at the end that I played a little bit of, the theory note really isn't particularly specific. Check this out. My scribble there indicates a G Phrygian dominant drone for the entire final 32 bars. So that's not much to go on. However, a drone gives one freedom to do all kinds of things with the melody and intertwining, interlocking instrumental lines, which you hear a lot of in those 16 bars. Let's take a look at the readout on the screen of just how many tracks are in the main session. So, I just did a count, and there are 21 active tracks during those 16 bars. Some of those tracks are actually mixed downs from subsessions, that's why I refer to this as the main session, and I'll talk about those subsessions in a moment. First, let's take a look at just some of the individual tracks that are in there to make this up. For this, I'm just going to use the output from the speakers. Here's the main drum track. I've named it Jerry, after Jerome Brown, who did the uh, awesome drums for the Shin Gojira soundtrack. There it is. That is quantized, but it has a little bit of a human feel to it as well, because I spent inordinate amounts of time putting together those fills. Not programmed, performed, although I will admit I slowed down the metronome sometimes. Also in there is a drum track called HDR, which isn't high dynamic range, it's a hip-hop drums or house drums. Check this out. And I have a separate echo track for the Jerry drum section. Over the speakers like this, it probably just sounds like noise, but 
buried in the mix, it does give more texture to the Jerry drum track. There's synthetic bass. To me, the sonic inspiration there is obvious. That is really, really prodigy. There's another bass. Tamberly, that is a bass, but it's up an octave from where you'd expect a bass to be, and that helps to create this electronica texture. Now, to make something like that more interesting in stereo, because some of this mixing I do specifically to sound good while riding trains, I have that exact track, but scattered and echoed and effected across the stereo spectrum. You won't really hear that as I play it over the speakers for the camera, but it's definitely in the main mix. As you can hear with the arpeggiation here, I'm not setting up any chord changes or any 4-5-1 sequence. This is strictly the Phrygian dominant drone. There are various other synthesizer parts in there that are difficult to audition independently, but that add to the thickness of the mix. There's a very creepy sound in there, which I call a poppy harp, and I have it verbed and devastated. I have a trance lead synthesizer. Additional percussion, this is sample based. A couple of guitar lines that bounce around in the stereo spectrum. When I first listened to this on a train on my way from Shin Yurigaoka to Yoyo Uehara, I was actually pretty happy with the result. So those layers in the main section so far give you this temp mix. And here I am able to fade from the speaker output to my real temp mix. This is what I listened to on the train recently. That's pretty good. I like the sound design. The G Phrygian dominant drone is very clear. I'm not going off in any melodic directions. It's just right there. And when you're listening to it on headphones, it just takes you into an interesting sonic space. But musically, it's not complete. Now, it turns out that the inspiration for how to fix this came from two problems. One problem was my original plan was to put a massive guitar solo on top of this. I love playing Phrygian Dominant on guitar. It's a relatively easy scale for me to play. There are a lot of um, one fret movements that make it really easy to just uh, do fast lines with just two fingers. It's lazy, suits me just fine. It uh, tends to give that uh, automatic exotic feeling to my guitar lines. But I wanted to play really fast and really complicated. Two things that are totally not me. I'm not good at either of them. I could farm out the solo, and that was an alternate plan. But then there's the second problem, which was recently I got the inspiration to really feel like using a massive orchestral sound and a huge choir sound. I hadn't done a choral sound in many years and I've done a little bit of orchestral style work, especially with my Shingojira cover, and uh, there's even some of it in Pigeon Infestation and uh, Attack on Goat, um, Robots vs. Reptiles, so I have used a little bit of it, but nothing really huge. And so I got the idea, well, this whole drone setup would work really nicely with something similar to Plain Chant, a droning choral piece. I wrote the lyrics on my mobile phone and uh, decided, how about I do this with a 15-person choir? Here's just the choir over the speakers. Fancy, 
So, that required its own entire subsession. I spotted in a guide track, which was a premix of this piece, and then one by one I recorded 15 different voices. There are five baritones, five tenors, and five what I called contraltos. Now, every one of those voices is me, but I contorted my face in various different ways and uh, moved my larynx in various different ways to create distinct voices. Mixed them together, and I got that choir. It's not plain chant, there is harmony in there. It's not just octaves. Some of the lines move around a little bit, but I'm actually pretty pleased with the result. It sounds kind of like a bit like an amateur senior choir to me, and that's great because that's exactly what I used to sing with many years ago. I mentioned wanting to work with orchestra, and one of the frustrations of working with synthesizers is, well, there's a limitation to what you can do. You can create an orchestral sounding arrangement and be really dissatisfied with the timbres, and I've had that happen to me a lot. You can create an orchestral arrangement with purposely synthetic sounding timbres, and then you've got synth orchestra. I really like that. It, you know, for a great example, consider the work of Daft Punk on the Tron Legacy soundtrack. Awesome. In this case, I wanted something that sounded as close to genuine orchestra as possible. So that involved a lot of arrangement, revoicing, re-recording. Not just 16 standard MIDI tracks. I filled up the 16 standard MIDI tracks, then did all my discrete recording, then revoiced many of those individual instruments and recorded them again, and smashed them all together with some reverb, and here's the result naked over the speakers. <laughs> bad. There is depth, there is breadth, and absolutely there is density. It's a lot of density already in just the 16 bars of orchestra, then 15 tracks for the choir, then 21 more tracks for the main session, and that gives you the final result. I played that already uh, earlier in this video, so now what I'm going to do is play for you, and this time I will be the direct. So this is the exact recording mixed into the video. Here is the just the choir plus the orchestra. And that will be a bonus track on my new album. There they are, the densest 16 bars I've done in a very long time. 